All right, time for another video from Fix It All Paul. You've seen me view out the window here a couple times before. Looking at that car right there. My 96 Corolla. Another free snowblower. Subject of a different video. Today we're going to be talking about problems with the battery light in the Corolla. I sporadically have that battery light come on. I thought it was the battery. Checked out the battery. No, it's not. Apparently I have some sort of an alternator issue, but it's kind of bizarre. Whoa, I dropped you. Uh, but it's kind of bizarre because it's not consistent when it comes on. Comes on, comes off. Alternator belt squeals. It's not really what I think is a consistent problem. The other day the light was on and I went outside. This is not the alternator from that car, but it's essentially the same thing. I went outside while the car was running, that light was on, and I tapped the side of this cover, and the light went out. A couple of times I've done that and had the light go out and stay out sometimes for several days. Now this alternator is from a later year model. The mounting on the one I have this year and these years are reversed. This is from a later model. This is a known good alternator. But what's under this cover is the voltage regulator, which is where you plug in here. And so I thought of what I would do is instead of taking that alternator out and bringing it up here and putzing around, I would take the cover off of this and see exactly what's under here and see if I can take a reasonable guess as to what's happening out there. Because maybe all I need to do is either take the cover off, the alternator is still in the car, and take the regulator out and fix it, or Maybe I can just take the cover off this, the cover off that, and take this regulator and put it in that alternator. But I thought we would uh, get together today and open this up and see what we find inside here. I brought my uh, quarter inch tool kit here. It's not complete, but I don't think I'll need all my quarter inch tools to get into this. We've got some... Uh, Nuts up at the top here. Let's see if we can find the right size. Ah, uh, there we go, bingo. Let's just use a little torque bar. Do I need to. Am I zoomed out? Oh, there we go. That's a lot better, huh? Alright, let's see if we can get these off without breaking them. There's not a whole lot to these things. But. Nonetheless, I want to be careful. I don't want to break anything. It's a little crusty on the threads. Now, if you look at this thread right here, let me get a little bit of light on there for you. If you look at this thread, I'm starting to take it off. There's some crust on the top. Now, if I try to run that nut all the way up, I'm just going to be trying to plow over that crud. Sometimes, when you're taking a nut like this that's a little crappy off, you turn it back until it's kind of tight. Turn it forward. This is especially helpful when you're taking spark plugs out. Sometimes carbon builds up on the threads, and if you try to run it through, you can strip the thread out. But if you give it a little bit of back and forth, allow some of that crud to flake off. And oftentimes get it off without breaking anything. Yeah, I know this is kind of an old older car, but the process is reasonably around the same. Now this does not. This looks like it's got some sort of a uh, metal tab going from here to here. We'll take it off anyway, see what happens. 
kind of wanted to take the cover off first, but I don't think I can without taking both of these out of here. Because this, rather than being a nut like the rest of them, is actually a bolt. And it does have a little, I'm guessing, some sort of ground strap on there. And this is a little trickier. This is the main battery post connection. This goes directly to the battery. Let's see if we can find the right socket for that one. No. Of course not. 10 millimeter. While we're here, I'm just going to spy this in the fill box. I don't know if you've ever uh, seen these. They go in the back of a socket, like that, and you put a wrench on them. Uh, so that if you don't have the right socket drive, or maybe you don't have enough room, you, know, you can see this is a lot lower profile. You can get a wrench on them. Uh, they're pretty handy. I got them at Harbor Freight cheap. They had the quarter, the three-eighths, and the uh, half-inch all-in-one package, and they were pretty cheap. You can't really go beefy torquing on them, even though they're black, kind of like they're hardened for, uh, or tempered rather, for um, impact use. I really don't think they would stand up to impact use. Take that little plastic insulator off. You note that this is cut out right here so this can slide off. Grab a flat blade screwdriver. Give it a little leverage here, a little leverage there. Let's see if we can't get this cover. There we go. Not much to the uh, cover, just a basic metal cover. Set that aside. Now what we've got is the regulator assembly. It has some diodes and whatnot in it. See, it's held on by a bunch of screws on the edge. There's some brushes in here. Maybe I've got a problem with brushes. This seems to be some sort of protective dust cap. Just goes on on the top. Kind of make note of that, which way that goes. And yeah, the brush. There's a brush that sits in here. There's probably another one underneath. I gotta get a different screwdriver. So we, uh, I didn't feel like hunting too hard for the Phillips head screwdriver with the handle, so what I did was I uh, just took the T handle, quarter inch socket, and a driver bit. Should do the trick. Go around and uh, that bit's not going to do the trick. I'm going to have to hunt for that screwdriver. All right, we got the screwdriver. Let's take. Geez, those are in there tight, huh? That's not good. I was hoping this would be an easy disassembly, and now I don't think that's going to be the case. Ooh, it feels like it's just going to strip that screw head right out of there. I don't think the other size screwdriver. I've got the four-way, five-way, whatever you want to call it. Let's see if the smaller screwdriver bit fits that screw head more snugly. Somehow I don't think so. Now that's going to strip out too. So... Maybe I need to find a slightly different method of doing this. Let me uh, see if I can get these two out of here. Ah, oh, that one came up. Let me see that. Yeah. Apologize for the lighting. I've got a desk lamp here. It's pouring rain out. Not exactly a... Uh, Good day for the lighting. I like to do these videos when the sun's coming through the window. 
But maybe we'll find something that solders together in here that looks like maybe it could come apart. Maybe it could be re-soldered. Something like that. Okay, I got those two screws out. Yeah, see this whole thing wants to come off in one piece. I don't know if you can uh, see that or not. But it sure does want to come off in one piece. There's also a couple more screws down in here, but that's the brush holder. That doesn't, I don't think that's directly related. You know, it is somewhat related to all of this. This is a heat sink. There's probably diodes under here. It looks like there's some diode or some electrical connections underneath these little spots here. But let me pause this and, uh, See if I can figure out a bit that fits better so I can get those screws out. All right, I've got my a set of Irwin bits. I picked those up in a free pile somewhere or something along the way. And it does seem to fit a little better. I already tried it on this one, so this one's cracked loose. So you can get this one to go too. Ah, there we go. It does, it seems to fit a lot more snugly than that other screwdriver there we go now we can uh... again this is turning into the same sort of thing I can feel the threads trying to hang up so a little forward and back action to keep those from snapping off because in this case, I think if we snapped it off, we'd be dead in the water. Take these ones off. Ew. There's no magnet holding that in there, so. Again, in a perfect world, I'd have the different screwdriver. In fact, now that that's loosened up, maybe I can use the other screwdriver to finish taking these out, huh? Yeah. One of the things I encourage if you're new to doing this sort of thing, sometimes remembering how stuff goes back together can be difficult. You can always take pictures with your cell phone. Now this whole thing's going to come out of here, and right up in here, is a brush and I don't want that brush to go flying off so I'm gonna lift that up I don't know if you can see that right in there I'm gonna lift that up and hold that in with the screwdriver Let's see if we can get this the rest of the way off of here I just don't want that to spring out now let's push this aside for the moment I think you can probably see that brush in there that's spring loaded I didn't want that to go shooting out of there and wind up someplace where I couldn't find it. Now these brushes look to me like they got plenty of meat left on them. The contacts on the armature look smooth. They're worn. There's a ridge there, but they're smooth. But we're not really concerned with the guts of this because this is not going in the car. Uh, again, the mounted for it is different, so we'll leave this aside. What we're concerned with is all of this. Now, you can probably see, let me bring all this a little closer. In fact, let me move this whole setup. I'll be right back. All right, we'll continue on here. This is a little bit better. Yeah, you can see the brush. There's one there and one on the back. There's uh, some sort of a voltage regulator assembly. But what I'm looking at, I find interesting, is these connections here. There's uh, another one over here. There's several of them, actually. There's one here. One here. Another one here and here here and here and I'm gonna bet those seem to be sort of spot welded and covered with some sort of
coating to keep them clean. Now these are all nice and solid. And I think there's probably a diode up inside of here. In fact, I'm sure that that's what that is. Yeah, I can see that. There's a diode in there. There's some white RTV here. It's a little soft. And I'll bet that the problem that I'm having with that other alternator is that one of these either connected here or up here is loose and when you tap that cover it touches and it's good for a while because this is where the main battery connection comes in there's another connection there so my conclusion is that you, know, you can also see there's two similar connections here this one's a little rusty maybe that's what I got going on with that one I don't really know uh, this regulator assembly does come out of there so I'm guessing that if I go into that alternator that's what I'm gonna find however what I'm concerned about is those screws that I took out around the edge in the car that I've got down there, this whole thing sort of sits like this, and I'm not sure my access to those screws is going to be adequate to get them out, so I might have to take that alternator out of there. However, given the weather today, that will be a project for another day. Uh, in any case, that's what the regulator assembly Well, technically, this is the regulator assembly. This is the diode plate, I guess, or whatever. Uh, but that's what that looks like. With any luck, when I get it apart, I find that the issue is here. And that I can just take off the two screws here and the one screw there. Take that off. And uh, replace it with this one. Uh, the alternator that's in that car uh, looked like it was brand new put in. Probably a rebuild unit. Uh, when I bought the car about a year ago and uh, so it doesn't have a ton of use on it but that's all we have for this for today we'll do a follow-up video on pulling the other alternator out getting that taken care of on a day when it's not so dreary and gray it's supposed to rain the rest of the week here so it might be a while but thanks for tuning in rate comment and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one